on today's menu, kumis. Oh, that smells so good. It smells like a delicious candle I want to eat. Ew. Across the globe, what's delicious is questionable. Why would you eat that? Excuse me. This is Stan. Stan loves milk. You wouldn't believe how much Stan loves milk, but Stan wonders, how could I jazz up this milk thing? Add a little zip. Well, Kumis was what he came up with. It's fermented horse milk wine, very lightly alcoholic, and never spelled the same way twice as far as I can tell. Like, ever. It sounds a little weird, but the Stans really do love their fermented horse milk. Or more specifically, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. See what I did there? Nice work, Shakespeare. I'd clap, but somebody would have to animate my arms to do that. Kumis is ancient. It's been traced as far back as 4300 BC in Kazakhstan, and it possibly takes its name from a group of people known as the Kumiks. <laughs> it's still frequently produced in places like Mongolia, where it's called Arag, and is even in several South American countries like Colombia, where it's believed to have made its way via the Bering Strait. You too can get drunk on horse milk, so teenagers get those pencils and paper ready. First, you have to harvest it from a horse. Now, horses aren't nearly as comfortable being milked as cows, especially if they're male. Please don't milk a male horse because that's not milk. You want a lady horse called a mare. That's a horse with a bow on it. Hey! But mares do not produce a lot of milk. If you're hoping to throw a kumis kegger based off one horse, some people are gonna end up sober, but still shirtless. At this point, you'll begin to ferment the milk. Really old methods to ferment the milk involved getting blind slaves to stir and scoop it up to 3,000 times a day for even fermentation. After this is done for several days, the buttery product is traditionally poured into a leather sack. This sack has to stay in motion to prevent it from coagulating. One method of keeping the milk moving was to keep it strapped to a horse for several days. But the more social method involved every person in the village strapping one of the leather sacks to the outside of their doorway. Every time a villager passes by the sack, they're supposed to give it a good solid punch to shake up the horse booze inside. Mare's milk has a higher sugar content than other milks, so the resulting drink has an alcohol content of about 2.5%, which is not a lot. Hmm, yes, but... Why would you drink that? A big chunk of the world doesn't even ask that question. They just do it. It's fairly popular in many parts of the world. It's even spread to Japan, where the popular soda Kalpis has modeled its flavor after the unique taste of kumis. Because it's so old, kumis holds a special place in the hearts of the people who have been drinking it for centuries. The people of Kyrgyzstan especially maintain a deep cultural connection to it, being of the belief that it puts them in touch with the culture of the past. They even have a saying, Kumis is man's blood, and fresh air is his soul. It's so important to them that they named their capital Bishkek, after the paddle that is used to stir kumis during production. But for years now, people have reported a number of health benefits deriving from the bubbly drink. In the early 1900s, there were even multiple resorts dedicated to the kumis cure, which involved drinking large quantities of the stuff. Popular claims at the time touted it as a treatment for ailments such as tuberculosis, bronchitis, and anemia. And the resorts were frequented by such guests as Leo Tolstoy and Anton Chekhov. Even though the health benefits are largely overstated, if not totally non-existent, there is a low but certainly present alcohol content that will probably make you feel better. So why not raise a glass of tasty, milky, bubbly, fermented horse squeezins de kumis. <laughs> hey guys, so uh, I've made some homemade kumis because it's uh, surprisingly hard to find here. Did the whole bit. Doesn't smell bad. Smells kind of yogurty. Ooh. I may have screwed up but I feel like we have a contract here. And so now I gotta feed something to some people. Oh no. This has to be bad. 
fermented female horse milk. Ooh. It's weird though, because the closer it gets to my nose, the more like vomit waffle matter it smells. Ooh, somebody said it smells like cake. Oh, it smells like cake. That person's an idiot. <laughs> it actually does smell like cake. Like old yogurt with swamp water. And dyed it. Okay. Wait. Tastes like vomit waffle batter too. <laughs> Except thinner. <laughs> this is a thing that people do willingly. <laughs> That's really bad. Ew. <laughs> I hated every bit of that. Yeah, it's not good. It was really disgusting. It's terrible. Oh, it tastes like vomit. Oh. It's like I threw up in my mouth. Gets right in there, doesn't it? <laughs> the taste itself. What are, your, what are your other thoughts on the flavor? So, so vomit. <laughs> And mostly vomit. It's like when you burp really hard and like a little bit of barf comes mm -hmm. up. Yeah, a little bit of bile in the back of your throat. Oh, what is that? Uh, that's kumis. Maybe. Why does it smell so good? It also hangs around in the back of your throat for like a while. Or like back it of your hangs mouth. around like vomit, like, right? I feel like I've got vomit breath and I really need to like go have a couple of... Um, <laughs> it's super weird that way. I don't care for that and that made me feel bad instantly. These are all people who donate to the show as well as dozens of others online. If you'd like to donate and help keep Why Would You Eat That Alive, you can click on this button that says click to donate and go to Patreon. Uh, there's a subscribe button there, uh, other videos above me that you can watch if you want to. I mean, you, you get how insulates work, right? I mean, you're smart. You're smart.